Hello everyone, it's Elena and I recently finished my final exams for this semester of my master's degree and I finished with top grades only which is really lovely and I asked you guys on Instagram if you have any questions about my study technique or my university experience so far so let's get into it. This question was asked in German but it translates to how do you study, so what methods, people always say that just summarizing things doesn't do you any good, so actually I summarize a lot and it does me a lot of good, however I also think that this advice does not work for everyone but it does work for me and it works really well for me. What I do is I summarize all of the information I have from the textbook and from the lectures into really aesthetically pleasing study notes. If you don't think that they're pretty that's fine but I love this look okay um, and this helps me a ton because by thinking about how I can visually represent this information in a concise but still like appealing way I actually think a lot about the connections of the different topics and I can see whether I've really understood it and by making it visually appealing I will look at it a lot more than I would if it were just like an ugly typed out summary um, and to me that just works. I like pretty things and I like looking at that. So it helps me to look back at that and read over it. So what I do is I write these summaries and that's probably 80% of my studying for retaining information. And then it's just reading over it, sometimes reading it out loud and sometimes even recording myself like a podcast, you know, so that I can then listen to the information again and again while I'm, for example, walking to university. How do you keep everything in order while studying and having a boyfriend? Well, I think the most important thing is managing your time well and also making sure that you set aside dedicated time slots for the things that are important to you, but also communicate your priorities. Like I made it very clear to my boyfriend that my education is my priority um, because that's something that I'm gonna have for my entire life and it's something that is gonna help me have a career later in life hopefully so that is something that matters a lot to me and that I'm gonna dedicate a lot of time to and if someone wouldn't accept that then that wouldn't be okay for me advice to high schoolers who haven't figured out what they want to do after graduation my best tip would be to go and sit in on some lectures. So you usually have some interests, um, like for example, through your extracurriculars. So think about majors that could relate to that. And most of the universities, especially in Germany, are very cool with you just going and sitting in the lecture and listening to it. Because that will show you whether you're interested in those topics or whether you're sitting there like, and eh, this is really boring, I wanna get out of here. And if you don't know whether they would be cool with it, you can always email the professors. professors are really scary when you look at them from the high school perspective but they are super chill in real life okay if you email them and you're like I would love to sit in your lecture because I'm interested in this topic you're teaching on they will usually be very excited to let you sit in on the lecture what is the biggest difference you notice between the University of Cambridge and Tübingen so I did my bachelor's degree at the University of Cambridge and I'm now doing my master's here in Tübingen and I think the biggest difference is the level of support that you receive because in Cambridge you have supervisions which are these small study groups so it's usually like two to five students and the professor and you discuss the topics of the lectures and here you're just kind of on your own. Um, for some of the subjects you do have something called Fallbesprechungen where they go through um, a different problem question every meeting um, but it's a big group it's like 25 people so it's not the same level of individualized support that you have at Cambridge so you are a lot more on your own here than you are at Cambridge. Um, however, I do think that there is a benefit to that because you learn to work a lot more independently and I think you also learn to organize yourself a little bit more because you don't have that structure set in place for you of having a supervision every two weeks. Here you have to completely organize your own study schedule. Um, so I do think that that can be helpful but I also think that the Cambridge support was really brilliant and I very much loved it but it was also very stressful to prepare for every supervision because those supervisions were helpful but they were also a lot of work. Would you study the law again if you could decide again? Yes, definitely. It was the right subject choice for me because I love studying law. I think it's a really exciting subject. It is a subject that affects pretty much every area in your life, if you think about it. I mean, what products are allowed to go into a supermarket? What cars are allowed to drive on the street? Um, how can you buy a house? Everything in your life is affected by law. So I think this is a really exciting subject. However, I might not study it in the UK again, to be honest. Um, because when I started studying in the UK, I very much thought, you know, I might settle there. Um, but things changed and I also realized the country was perhaps a bit different than I had imagined it because 
I went to the UK for the first time when I moved there to do my degree. Um, so things turned out different and you know while I was studying Brexit happened and all of these things so I probably wouldn't do that degree again in the UK but I would definitely still choose to study law. How did you manage with those afternoons when you needed to sleep but you had to study? Honestly, I probably went to sleep because I think when you are tired you're not going to retain much information anyway so you then studying is very much fruitless. So I would rather go and take a three hour nap than study and basically retain nothing because it's not worth a lot. How did you manage to be up to date with your notes and lectures? I did not manage to do that this semester because I was doing terrible health wise and I actually have to get surgery in a few weeks. So things were not that great, I missed a lot of lectures because I just couldn't go because I was feeling bad. Um, but I caught up on it whenever I felt somewhat okay and I just used every minute that I had basically to do that. So I ended up prioritizing my studies, I didn't really pick up a new hobby here in Tübingen um, because I just knew I don't have the time to do that. I really hope I can do that next semester though because I do need to socialize more because I literally have made like one friend and that's a bit sad. How can I stop being distracted by my phone all the time? Any tips? Get the Forest app. This is not a sponsorship, okay? I just love this app. So you grow a virtual tree there and if you leave the app before the timer is off, this virtual tree dies. And let me tell you, that is a really sad experience and you do not want to have that. So you are gonna stay off your phone during that time. It's very helpful. The other thing you can do is FaceTime a friend and then basically create a study group. So then you have a commitment to study while this other person is kind of watching you. Um, it's a bit pressuring, but it does help in my opinion. Your favorite study supplies. So I'm actually not that big of a fan of making a big list of things that I love for study studying because I think the study community is very much commercialized I guess the act of studying like there is so much that people have just to study like they have these cute highlighters the newest iPad yada 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 and you don't need all of that to be successful I mean you can be an A plus student with a piece of paper and a pen so I don't think you need any of that and I just want to make that very clear personally I love to use my iPad it's a 2017 iPad Pro I do have a paper-like screen protector on it because I really did not vibe with the glass feeling of writing on it. I do have to say, however, my iPad is kind of dying, so I am thinking of whether I should invest in a new one or whether it's just not worth it to me and I'm just going to go back to old school paper. We're going to see. I do have a MacBook um, just because I'm in this like Apple ecosystem anyway. And I do always take that to class with me for typing my lecture notes. I used to take lecture notes on my iPad as well, but since it is dying, this is not really a realistic scenario anymore because its battery would just not last. And the last thing that I really love is noise cancelling headphones. I'm someone who gets distracted by noise very easily, so that has really helped me to stay focused. I have the Apple AirPods Max. They are really great, but I also think they are way overpriced, so I would only buy them if you get them on sale. How did you find your apartment in Tübingen? I was very close to selling my soul to the devil to find an apartment in Tübingen, not gonna lie, because it was a difficult, difficult search. People here try to rent out anything to students, even things like, you know, little garden sheds that don't even have water or real heating, and they will rent that to you for like 600 euros a month. Tübingen is crazy expensive when it comes to student apartments, and I was very close to saying, I'm not gonna find an apartment, I'm just gonna take the train from Stuttgart to Tübingen every day, which is a one and a half hour train ride. Um, like, if you factor in, you know, getting to the main station and everything. So this wouldn't have been ideal, but it was very much possible. But then I found this apartment on eBay Kleinanzeigen, and I went for the viewing, and I just got really lucky, because I think probably everyone who viewed it wanted to get it, because it's a very nice apartment, and it was a really good deal price-wise. So I'm very grateful that I found this apartment, but honestly, it was pure luck. Why did you already start to write your master thesis? Didn't you just start in tubing in? Yes, I literally just started. It feels that way to me as well. But the master's program is only a one year program. And that is actually quite typical for law, I believe. I think in other subject areas, masters tend to be longer. But a lot of the LLMs that I looked at were one year programs. So you have to write your master's thesis pretty early on because you're gonna have to end it in by the end of that year. What do you do during study breaks except for reading? I need some inspiration. 
So during my study breaks, I like to do something that doesn't make me brain tired, I guess. What I mean by that is that there are certain activities that make me feel somewhat tired when it comes to studying again. So I'm not as productive right after I finish the activity. So reading for me is something that keeps my brain engaged and I can be productive immediately after I finish a chapter. Another thing that is really good for me is drawing. I tend to just draw things in Procreate because then I don't have to waste any paper or, you know, nice color because I'm not very talented, but I just like to do some stuff. Um, and I don't really go on social media that much because because it's not that helpful for me in terms of staying engaged with my brain. Um, but I do like to use my phone for Sudokus, um, which is also a really random activity, but I have actually become quite competitive with myself in it um, in the past few months. I don't really know why, but actually it's kind of fun. How did you choose your course of study? So when I was looking at LLM programs, I first looked at the cost and the availability of my scholarship because I had already secured a scholarship for my master's degree from the Studienstift on the Deutschen Volkes. However, there's a catch because that that scholarship is only available to you if you study in certain countries and depending on where I would end up going I might not have been able to keep the scholarship and I obviously wanted to keep it and I also wanted to go somewhere where they offer specializations that I'm interested in so that I can you know focus on an area of law that I want to focus on in my master's degree. And Tübingen stood out to me from all the universities that ticked those checkboxes because it was a small program. So the maximum capacity is 12 people per year. We are only six this year. I think we're now five because someone seems to have dropped out, but that's a story for another day. Um, however, that means you have a lot of individualized support. Still definitely not the same level of support that you would have at Cambridge, but when you are such a small program, it is very easy to get support and I have definitely also seen that um, in my time here so far. And that is something that I really value and that I think makes it just a lot easier to do your degree. How to learn, how to learn. My best advice for that is try out a lot of different study methods until you find one that works for you. So some people love the Pomodoro method, some people love to write summaries, other people love to record themselves saying out loud what the information is and then just listening back to that. Some people love to get quizzed on things and that helps them retain the information. Some people like to explain things to other people, like you can literally just explain those things to your stuffed animals, okay? Um, so try out a lot of different things until you have something that works for you. And if you are struggling to find different study methods, I would just recommend trying out different study YouTubers. Just listen to their method, see if it works for you, and that way I think you're gonna find the right one for you. What do you write on your study notes? So the short answer is everything that needs to go into my brain. If you want to know how I exactly structure these notes that I write on good notes on my iPad, I have an entire video dedicated to how I make those notes. I'm gonna link it in the description box below for you guys. It's a few years old, but honestly, the method has not changed since then. Will you make more study with me videos on Twitch or recorded on YouTube? I love your study with me playlist on YouTube. Thank you so much. Um, I will probably do more study with me videos on Twitch. I really like Twitch because it works. Um, for some reason my YouTube live streams just stop working. They would always crash and that was pretty annoying and also honestly pretty distracting for me during a study session. But Twitch has been working pretty well for me so I'm probably going to keep doing the sessions there and I always announce the session times on my Instagram. This question was asked in German but it's basically asking what I'm doing with my statute book. So do I annotate, do I highlight, do I use post-its, whatever. Now uh, these are my statute books and here's what I'm doing with them. I sometimes underline or I write a paragraph next to another paragraph if they're relevant. I only use a pencil to do that. We are actually allowed to use highlighters in Tübingen but I've just gotten used to the pencil only rule because that's all what we were allowed to do in Regensburg so I've continued doing that and the main thing that's helpful for me is using these permanent post-its. They are a lot more durable than real post-its and they are called a Griffregister in German. Now this one here was a blank one so you just write your own numbers on it but the really great thing is that you can buy them pre-printed in Germany for your statute book. So it will have the different paragraph numbers on it along with the headings and I think that's really helpful. Now these might be too many post-its for some people so you can just stick in the ones that you really need but I actually find this a pretty helpful way of studying. Sometimes they also come with different colors and it's just nice to not have to think about where you're going to put a post-it because they usually pick the pretty good paragraphs for the Skriftregister. So I think that's a really good option for just having an overview of your statute book. How does a weekly life of a Cambridge student compare to your life now? 
Honestly, my life now is a lot more chill than it used to be at Cambridge. Now, don't get me wrong, my Cambridge degree was a very rewarding experience and I learned a lot from it, especially managing my time. However, it was also pretty mentally draining because I do not remember a single day from that degree where me and my peers were not stressed about our workload because it was so much and it felt like you could never finish your work. And had I gotten sick like I was this semester, I'm not sure I could have caught up in Cambridge, whereas here that was possible and I think here you have much more of a work-life balance, which is just a lot healthier in my opinion. Are grades important to you or not really? If they are, why? They are very important to me and I think that's because it was kind of just put into my brain by myself, not by my environment. My parents are really chill about grades, um, but it was very important to me because a lot of things depended on my grades. Um, when I was younger, I wanted to get a scholarship to go to a boarding school, which I ended up getting, but I had to have good grades for that. And then when I was in boarding school, I needed good grades to get a scholarship to go to university because my parents could not afford to send me to Cambridge. And then when I was in Cambridge, I needed good grades to get into the master's program that I wanted to get into, you see? Um, so grades were always really important because I needed to have good grades for getting the finance for my studies, for scholarships, and for getting into the programs in the first place. So yes, I do put a lot of weight on grades and I do think they should be a little bit less important to me because I think it would be a lot healthier for me, but somehow I can just not change that in my brain. Are you going to do a PhD? Honestly, I really wanted to do a PhD when I started my bachelor's degree because it seemed really exciting to me to get into like this one field and become an expert in it. And I really love doing research. Like I wrote two papers for publication and I really enjoyed the process and I would love to go much deeper into one topic. However, COVID has really kind of destroyed my university experience for me. It was not great to be completely isolated for years at home and just, you know, have lectures online. It was not great in the past few months to literally be freezing in the lecture halls at my German university because yes, they tried to save money on heating and that was not exactly a good experience for us students. Um, so I did not really enjoy the past few years of my study experience as much. So I'm not sure I still want to do a PhD because I just haven't enjoyed being a student as much as I used to. Um, so I'm very much on the fence right now of whether I really want to still do that or whether I just want to start working. Do you struggle with the thought of being dumb if you don't get a question or problem? To be honest, I struggle with the thought of being dumb all the time regardless of whether I understand something or not because I have severe imposter syndrome. So I always think that I don't deserve to be somewhere in university, like I am not smart enough for things and I always think that I'm I'm gonna fail um, you know in my exams and my degree I, I don't know why um, I have a very toxic culture of self-talk in my brain um, because I don't tell myself very nice things about my intelligence but I also don't really know how to turn that off how do you motivate yourself honestly I'm not a very motivated person but I think I'm a very disciplined person and I think discipline is a lot more important than motivation because my motivation might be to get this degree and to get a good job with it later on but that is something that you know is going to be very present in your head in the beginning and it's going to fade very quickly. Whereas when you are disciplined, when you have a routine, that's something that's going to stick with you throughout that degree. So I'm just someone who has a very set routine of I come home from my lectures and I sit down at my desk and I do my work. And that's, I think, what helps me a lot more than any type of motivation. Do you use a stand-up desk? Do you recommend one? Now, I do actually have a desk where you can adjust the height so you can make it a stand-up desk, but I have never, not once in my life, stood while studying. I find standing very exhausting. Um, that might be because I have an illness affecting my back, so maybe that's the reason why. But I want to be really comfortable while studying, and so I want to sit and study while doing that. But I know that stand-up desks are helpful for some people, but personally, I've never really understood the hype around them. Did you ever try the Anki method for studying? Greetings from Wordsbook. Greetings back to you. And uh, I downloaded the Anki app once, opened it, found it very confusing, and I've never opened it again. Is there a disadvantage of studying abroad? I think there are lots of disadvantages to studying abroad. There are also a lot of advantages, but I was asked about the negative points here. Um, I think the biggest disadvantage is you are not in an environment that you know, so you have a lot of stresses on top of your degree. 
you have to figure out where you can even you know buy your groceries where can you buy paper etc you don't know your area you don't have any friends there your family is not there you don't have that support system that you have at home and that can be difficult you need to organize a lot of things that you don't have to organize when you stay in your country like your health insurance you have to find a new doctor etc there is a lot of work that goes into studying abroad and it can be sometimes an isolating experience it can also be a very enriching experience and you can make new friends and you can get to know another culture you become more independent etc but it is something that is definitely not without difficulty and that's it for today's q a i hope you guys enjoyed this video thank you for watching and have a nice day bye